Hey everybody, it's been a minute. Back with a little bit more content from the Content Minds here on YouTube. Wanted to throw my hat in the ring uh, on some of the deep sea news as it, as the kind of the dust continues to settle here. Obviously, my my background in China studies and um, you know as a researcher uh, for my PhD and then also as a as an AI researcher um, now gives me a unique position to look at this issue. And uh, you know I've been pretty disappointed I think in the coverage both uh, from an understanding point of view of you know what I just like the. <laughs> The media really continuing to not understand what open source software is, what it means, how open source research works, how academic AI research works. That's half of my disappointment. The other half of my disappointment kind of continues to be the oscillation between folks who sort of are, are xenophobic towards Chinese researchers and, and then the folks who sort of completely blase about it and pretend that there is no political or geopolitical or ideological differences between China and other parts of the world. I think obviously like a lot of things you need to you know, kind of walk down the middle of that road and, and be aware of the upsides and the downsides. But I thought I'd talk about that a bit today and, and to sort of have a have a bottom line up front here. You know, what I wanted to do was talk a bit about how important open source re research is, uh, how important it is that we not hamstring ourselves uh, in the West, especially by, by ignoring um, a huge component of the people doing this research just because of uh, the country they live in. I also wanted to talk a bit about what is so important about GRPO or the group relative policy optimization a fine tuning process that they've uh, sort of iteratively uh, created here with the with the you know within the deep sea research group and maybe really how that connects to how i see the relationship between closed and open source models uh, and research uh, how, how i see that kind of playing out going forward so yeah first and foremost i think i mean i think it's important to note while uh, you know, a lot of the code for example the grpo fine tuning code the sort of reinforcement learning code that the deep sea team developed this is really the i think the the crown jewel of this of this series of papers that they've put out. That code is open source. You can go find that and implement it yourself right now. Their models, as far as I can tell, are open weights, which is a little bit a little bit more constricted than than a true open source um, code base, but a lot more open than say a closed source foundational model from OpenAI or something like that. But I think you know my my first reason in wanting to make this video really was watching the reportage on this issue and and just kind of seeing the complete lack of awareness and lack of understanding within certainly the business media and I think in, in a lot of ways the tech media as well in terms of what exactly is driving this kind of innovation. There's, there was so much sort of xenophobic fear about the, the quote unquote the Chinese obviating uh, all of the all of the work in the West on on, um, on AI software and, and uh, technology and businesses and, and obviously that's just not really how any of this works. If you actually go and read read some of their papers, you'll know. I mean, they're the first people to this being the deep seek researchers to note. Hey, we you know we've come up with this GRPO, this group relative policy optimization, and we think it's it's really useful because we uh, basically can estimate from a group of of kind of um, generations. You know what is the what is the average of these different chains of, of reasoning, and then we can take relative to that average, we can take answers that have a have a positive um, score um, and keep those uh, keep those chains. We can we can kind of do this with a, a kind of a simple averaging trick, right? A lot of these uh, these really cool discoveries in AI kind of come down to like we did something in a hard way, and then we found actually we have kind of this crappier solution, but if we you know, we kind of clued it together and we run it a billion times in, in, in sort of a fine tuning process. That tiny increment, it's kind of like quantization, right? It, it, the weights, the specificity of the number that represents the weights in the network actually can be, um, it doesn't need to be as, as specific. It doesn't need to have as many uh, points past the decimal point in terms of information as you, as you might think, because over billions of iterations, it just that those tiny differences don't matter. And, you know, the deep seek folks, to their credit, say, you know, we came up with GRPO. It's actually uh, built off of this uh, Shulman et al. Open, open AI paper called Proximal Policy Optimization, which is a, a well-known reinforcement learning, fine-tuning technique um, that's, that, what, that's been used for years. This paper originally came out in 2017. And, and what these guys did at DeepSeek was they said, we can actually take that approach and we do some, some other tweaks. But the main tweak really is we do this averaging trick instead of, um, having a separate language model sitting there as a critic adjudicating the quality of the of the of the reasoning chains that come out of the model. So we have one less model essentially, um, and it, and that model you know in the PPO context has to be a, a pretty beefy model. It has to, it, it takes a lot of compute to do that well. 
so they find they're able to to train this thing much more uh, cheaply, and, and there's been some controversy over just how cheaply they were able to train it, and what were they able to train it on, and should they have been able to train it on the things they were able to train it on, and you know, it goes on and on and on, but I, we don't have a time to get into all of that, unfortunately, today, but re really my first point here is go read even just the introduction to the deep seek papers, the math paper, and then the subsequent uh, follow-up paper about this um, this reinforcement fine-tuning process that they've cr that they've created, and it's clear in reading their when they're comparing it to DPO and PP and uh, PPO and RFT and all these things like uh, or excuse me RSFT, like they are building off of a chain of research and code that has that has been in the open source community for in some cases, you know, almost a decade, or in some cases more than a decade, right? And so my first point really is the achievement that they have been able to arrive at is very impressive. And they would be the first to say, thanks for the kudos. Here's all the people that we owe for this, right? Here's all the things that we have, uh, we have inherited from to create this. If through fear and xenophobia uh, and misunderstanding about the nature of open source research, we in the West do not let our researchers, whether they're government or academia or otherwise, utilize the open source research community to the same degree, we are, we are tying one hand behind our back in this process of discovery. So it's very, very important that we, and I think this all stems, like I alluded to earlier, from a deep misunderstanding of, you know, a Chinese lab created this this solution, right? Well, that's, that's true in the sense that the lab is in China, right? And they created a solution, but it's not true in the sense that like, that's not how science works, right? <laughs> it's just a very deep misunderstanding, I think, uh, of, of the scientific process and of the way that, that open source software and open source research works in the sense that DeepSeek uh, and this is why I think a big part of why they made um, the GRPO code open source is they, they know that's not their code, right? It's, it is in a sense, and it's not in, in a sense. It's a very emergent phenomenon of, you know, hundreds or thousands of, of researchers collaborating in an environment. So I think this is just, you know, first and foremost, a, a, a conflict between sort of business-minded people, um, media, tr or traditional media-minded people, uh, government kind of observers of all of this stuff, R really struggling, I think, to understand the, the core kind of advantages of the scientific research process and the open source software movement. Okay, so that said, what's important about this paper? I think this has also kind of been misunderstood. What's important about it isn't the model, and obviously we're moving away from thinking about models, um, at least, you know, if you ask Sam Altman or you ask uh, folks out of um, um, the research labs at Berkeley and other places, you know, you want to start thinking more about systems, right? And systems with a language model or a set of language models as a component within that system. Um, but, you know, the, the deep seek papers kind of indicate this as well, that, you know, we can take this, um, you know, our, our larger baseline model and have these distillates come out of it and these different quantization levels come out of it. So we're not really talking about at least I think what's important here isn't so much the models, although the models are really what led the way in terms of, oh, look, these are performative at the level of, of whatever, O3 or whatever. But that's not really the, the, the gold star here, right? The gold star is the group relative policy optimization. This is the thing that lets them, uh, and I think, again, these numbers have been exaggerated because there was, you know, I'm sure many ablation studies and many failed experiments and a lot of time getting this thing to work that didn't involve the final run where they said this cost whatever, $8 million or something, um, which was initially the real shocker for a lot of people. What's really interesting about this is because you, you kind of remove that, that critic model, you can then do this reinforcement learning, this fine tuning, reinforcement learning, fine tuning. You can do this much, much more cheaply because you're not running that, that foundation model to, to critic, to, or excuse me, to critique the, the answers, to critique the, um, the chains of reasoning. So again, that's, that's really what's, key here and that piece of code you could take and lift and use and do whatever you want with it it's already available in hugging face it's available uh, on multiple github repos on the internet you're able to do that now uh, because it was open sourced and i think you know this is another point you know sort of that even though the models themselves are open weights and that's a little bit less you know accessible it's more accessible than how say open ai uh ironically named open ai does this stuff uh, but the actual GRPO process is there. It's available. It's it's really useful. I think it's going to be really useful for smaller teams, for uh, for smaller contributors to the community, where you have a, a, a small amount of ground truth data that you want to boost off of. It's just going to really uh, improve the the ability for smaller groups and individuals to contribute to um, sort of the fine tuning process and continue to kind of feed into this 
small models movement, um, small domain specific models kind of a movement. But yeah, that, and that's kind of the, the final point here is we've had videos like this. I've covered this before with the Orca models where, you know, really using kind of some of the same, kind of using some of the same traditional fine tuning methods or the Orca models, they, you know, that suite of models was really had kind of a, a, a less drastic in terms of a market, a market impact uh, or a Wall Street impact. But when the Orca models came out, it was it was another kind of uh, maybe a year ago or so now that was a really revel revelatory kind of moment as well, because it was OK, you can actually have the foundation model that's trained with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. You know, basically, you can offload the the answers uh, from a large foundation model. Uh, to a smaller model in the same way that you would offload information from a Bob Dylan song to to a model, right? The same kind of process applies. You know, this is, I think, the the R1 stuff, the DeepSeek stuff is yet another example of you know, the open source community is is really a few months behind, and that, that's going to continue to be the case. So I think it, it was it's a really interesting phenomenon as this has become more important to the wider kind of uh, financial community to see, yeah, there are some businesses, I think, that have really built up the hype around this, just not even, not in terms of what these models or suites of models or systems of models can accomplish, but really more what is their moat and how durable is their moat? How how are, how able are they going to be to protect these technologies in some way and, and gate them when you're able to uh, continually have these kinds of challenges like the, the GRPO discovery where you know, if you don't have hundreds of billions of dollars of compute to throw at something, how how do you kind of remain competitive and and frankly just continue to experiment with um, with what you're able to to see coming out of the community? You know, there's always going to be this interest in. Oh, I saw you know the new paper out of the Radford Group at at, uh, at OpenAI has done something cool. I wonder if I could glue something together and make that work on you know in a more pared down way for my use case. You're always going to have um, this kind of tension between people who want to make this a business and people who want to discover things and, and make uh, systems and models work more effectively for, for users. And I think that's where we need to continue to kind of stay aware of both of the power of the open source idea, right, and the fact that it's, it's going to continue to really drive innovation and, and necessitate business models coming from other places uh, besides just... Uh, having some special technology. It's just not really how it works in, in the technology world. And so I think um, if you're looking to invest, that's, that's one thing. But you need to kind of be aware that these these innovations will continue to arise from the open source community. And so that, that's really what I wanted to say was, first and foremost, we need to be aware that the researchers who have access to the open source uh, research and can implement it without sort of political obfuscation and can iterate on it uh, will always lead the pack, whether they're in China or elsewhere. So if, you know, if we can't use that research coming out of China for political reasons that obviously hamstrings researchers in the West. Um, secondarily, you know, really the core takeaway here is the GRPO algorithm to do uh, reinforcement fine tuning, which is available uh, open source and everybody should use it. And, and thirdly, really thinking more about how do we report on this open source stuff and how do we, you know, really think about the continued near trailing capabilities of, of open source researchers to groups like OpenAI and Microsoft Research this really is going to continue to be a, a neck and neck race and anyone building a, a business model on having that kind of a moat, I think, uh, kind of is playing with fire there. Uh, so that's all, it, that's all it is for me today. Uh, really looking forward to seeing your comments as always and, and thanks for tuning in.